Paul's Cathedral has stood at the heart of London since 1845, and the Bell Tower has been an iconic landmark for the city throughout the years, in all weather, in all seasons. But the view from the outside is only part of the story. Inside the great west doors, the base of the tower is the cathedral entrance. A public space, welcoming and comfortable. Memorials on the walls remind us of our community's history. Just above us, the next level of the tower is not open to the public but it also contains memorials of a different kind. The stairs are steep up to the gallery. A gift from the Heyman family allowed for the installation of a new set of stairs in place of a ladder from the gallery leading into the tower. <laughs> Some time ago I was approached to toll the bells for the funeral of Fred Kingsmill, who was the owner of Kingsmill's department store that's a familiar London landmark. The family wanted me to play on the chimes before the funeral service, which is an unusual request. Many people like to choose their favorite hymns on the organ for the funeral, but it's, the chimes are not usually mentioned. Their reason was unique. The piece of music they wanted was called Shall We Gather by the River? And the Kingsmill family believed that it was played by Fred Kingsmill or his dad at the time of the flood of 1937. Fred Kingsmill played at the time of the Thames River Flood in 1937 as a witness to a significant, terrible event for the city and also as a tribute and memorial for those who were affected. History lives on the interior tower walls as bell ringers of the past recorded the date and reason they played the chimes. Some events had global impact. Others were more personal. Some events were happy, joyous occasions. And others were sad or somber. But all were significant and all are still remembered. So this is the chime at St. Paul's Cathedral. We have 11 bells. If we had 23 bells, it would be called a carillon, but because we only have 11, it is called a chime. And these are the um, handles, which are attached to the wires. So when you push down on one of the handles, it pushes down, pulls down the wire, which is attached to the clapper in the bells, releases the clapper so it strikes the bell. Uh, originally, the chime was one floor up from this location, and for many years that's where the chime was played from. When my dad, John Hartle Allen, first um, started playing the bells about 40 years ago, he had to play from the next level up and you have to climb a ladder and push a trap door with your head to reach that level 
So eventually my mother donated money so that the wires could be extended and the um, chime brought down to this level which is much easier to climb up to. In order to play the chime, some people play it with their fists and push down on the handles that way and other people take them with their hands and press down that way. In 1901, a full quarter clock was installed in the tower, with three faces, each measuring over five feet in diameter. This cast iron clock is one single piece. The hands are not affected by wind pressure, and the pendulum is made to withstand all varieties of temperature to keep accurate time as far as is possible. In the past, the chimes had been automated using machines, and it was possible to play tunes that were hole-punched into heavy paper scrolls, much like a player piano. But the machines haven't been used for a while. They were replaced by new generations of cathedral bell ringers, who play for the love of playing. While playing the chimes may seem a lonely task, Inside the tower are reminders of companions from the past and outside the people and traffic of our busy city. When you hear a hymn tune or peal from the bells, please pause and listen. It's not a machine. It's not automation. It's a real person playing for you. The bell tower is 114 feet tall, and its thick walls were designed to support a peal of six bells. In 1851, these six bells arrived in Port Stanley from England, and were transported to the cathedral by ox cart. They were the first of their kind in Ontario. In 1901, these bells were replaced by a peal of ten bells also cast in England. The ten bells, weighing 10,972 pounds, were rung for the last time at 7 p.m. on Sunday, July 14, 1935. They were recast into the present-day set of 11 bells, and these were heard for the first time on Christmas Day that same year.
I grew up playing the piano and seeing and listening to my dad play the bells at St. Paul's. So he taught me how to do so and my mom how to do so. And when he was no longer able to climb the stairs and ring on a regular basis, then I took over the family tradition of ringing the bells at St. Paul's. And I enjoy the opportunity to be able to play hymns and share the music with all of the downtown London community. I've played hymns since I was a little kid and always loved to do it. I don't think we had a lot of other music material in the house and that was just fine with me. So uh, then I moved on to playing the piano for years and years, which I still do. And the chimes is a kind of natural extension of that because it's also a keyboard instrument. I think I got into this because I was curious, wanted to know if I could master the sound and, and uh, what was involved in it all, um, and have just continued to do that. I think that the chimes have a kind of mystique of their own. They set a mood in the church, which is just lovely, and I like it for that. Thank you for joining us on this short tour of the Bell Tower. We hope you enjoy your time at the cathedral, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.